Hello and welcome to National Focus. I am Julian Morris. In the headlines, government clears land for construction of a housing development in Centre Grand Bay. A million dollar cash injection for a Dominica Youth Business Trust and the Prime Minister the Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt engages sporting organizations as part of efforts towards a resumption of sporting activities in the country. The details of the headline stories and more when we return. Welcome back. Government has acquired land for the construction of a housing development in Centre Grand Bay. A wide expansion of land has been cleared with 44 old homes being demolished to prepare for the construction phase of that project. Prime Minister the Honourable Roosevelt Skerritt led a cabinet delegation on a site visit on Thursday to get a first-hand view of the progress on the site clearing. This development is expected to commence soon with 84 homes to be built for the people of Dubic and Granby, 44 of which will be for the relocation of Dubic residents, while the rest will benefit the people of the Granby constituency. We've decided to extract a certain number of homes from this site and distribute them across the Granby constituency in, in, in Tetmon and in, in Bordeaux and within the the, the village of Granby itself on, on people's individual lots and some lands the government will acquire. And then, we will, we'll, and then you will have about 20 or so homes that you can provide to um, the Grand Bay residents who would like to live here. Prime Minister Skerritt says over 20 lots will also be made available to people of Grand Bay who wish to build their own homes. We'll sell it to them and of course they would um, build their own homes if they wish and so on because there's, there's also a demand for housing lots in the, the Grand Bay constituency. This investment will provide road infrastructure and drainage, a renovated police station, the reconstruction of a church as well as a new multi-purpose community centre. Housing has been provided to those displaced to facilitate the project. If we remove one person in a vulnerable state, that is progress. There is one less person in a vulnerable state. And um, what we have done also for the residents, because people are asking where, where is the entire village, where are they staying? Mm -hmm that we have broken their homes. Mm -hmm. We are renting places for them now. Um, so the government, um, we're paying rent for all of these people uh, for the duration of the um, construction site. Parliamentary representative for the Pidit Savan constituency, the Honorable Dr. Kenneth Daru, is satisfied that his constituents will soon be in improved living conditions. Dr. Daru reflected on the devastation done by Tropical Storm Erica in 2015 and again Maria in 2017 to Dubik, which deemed the area unsafe. I'm very excited to see that the project is in advanced state. As the Prime Minister also said, um, we, we're looking forward to the signing of, of the contracts within the next few weeks. And for me as a PAL rep, the Member of Parliament for 57, I think one of the most exciting um, aspects of the project, of course, apart from the constituents going to be receiving new climate resilient homes, would be the, the engagement of the local contractors and quite a number of um, local contractors have been, um, have been um, submitted, have been given the, the tender documents and I'm really looking forward to, to, to them um, being engaged and they're quite excited. I think they've gotten an overview of the project and of course you know when this happens apart from the economic benefits people also take better ownership of it knowing that they're part, you know, they're part and parcel of what is about to, to happen. Member of Parliament for the Grand Bay constituency, the Honourable Dr. Vince Henderson, is pleased that local contractors will be engaged in executing the project. I am excited about that opportunity as well because it will generate some economic activity within the community and within the constituency so that we can use those benefits to further improve other housing in the community uh, because obviously we cannot provide for everyone. We will be doing the selection based on socioeconomic conditions, based on needs, based on vulnerabilities, because there, there are some people who live in, in, in some precarious living conditions, and we, we have to give priority to those people. But we will continue to provide support to other people who will not be accommodated here, because clearly there, there is the demand for housing in, in the Grand Bay constituency is still great, but this will make a major contribution in solving that problem. Government will partner with the Montreal Management Consultants Establishment on this project. We have housing, two bedrooms and three bedrooms, 
uh, we have a church, we have a fire station, a magistrate uh, courthouse, we have a community center, we have a, a gas station, and we have shops with walkways of about four meters on each side of the street where people, people can uh, walk back and forth and, and, and enjoy a walk, per se, in their community. Uh, so this is going to be a, a well uh, done design and construction for the constituency of Grand Bay. Uh, and uh, what's, uh, what's nice about it is that it will be built uh, by Dominican contractors only for Grand Bay constituency, we have 38 contractors. A contract signing for the construction phase will be held in the upcoming weeks. The major development in center Grand Bay will boost the aesthetics of that constituency. More opportunities and increased economic activity will also be generated in that area. Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt has announced a cash injection of $1 million for the further development of the Dominica Youth Business Trust. He made this announcement at the Dominica Youth Business Trust graduation and award ceremony on Wednesday, 26 January. The Dominica Youth Business Trust continues to engage its entrepreneurs through training opportunities, grant provision, loan guarantees, mentorships, business plan development, business growth, and consultation. To this end, I announce the decision to make available an additional $1 million to the Dominica Youth Business and Business Trust. an additional $1 million to the Dominica Youth and Business Trust to support its activities. These funds are specifically intended for investment in the dreams of young entrepreneurs like you who need that added boost to bring your business idea to life. I hope that these funds will also facilitate the participation of many young Dominicans in the training and mentorship programs offered by the DYBT. Prime Minister Skerritt says government is always seeking ways to empower the youth for their personal and professional development. I applaud you for taking advantage of the opportunities for growth which this program has created for you. This government has taken decisive steps to create an enabling environment and provide access to mentorship, training, in the writing of business proposals and startup funding for small enterprises, which have the potential to grow into thriving businesses. Coordinator of the DYBT, Mr. Philip Rule, says the ceremony signified the perseverance of the individuals who participated in this program, as, the, as these times have been difficult due to the COVID-19 pandemic. It is momentous for us this year in particular because in spite of the many challenges presented by the pandemic, we recorded the highest number of graduates ever recorded in a training cycle. The DYBT is happy to support, inspire, and guide our entrepreneurs as we strive to turn young job seekers into job creators. Just like possibly everyone else, 2021 was a challenging year for the DYBT and especially for our entrepreneurs. However, despite the challenges, the DYBT was able to achieve many great things this year in the areas of training, mentoring, and entrepreneurship awareness, among other things. Mr. Rowell says in recent years, the DYBT has extended its flagship program, the Entrepreneurial Development Program, EDP, to communities across the island. This decentralized approach has enabled the trust to reach more entrepreneurs to equip them with key business management tools and techniques. These entrepreneurs are also eligible to all the other support services provided by the trust, including the loan guarantee facility and mentorship program. In, 2020, in July 2021, with the support from the UK Aid Sky Project, the DYBT hosted a community outreach training on the West District. This four-week program took place twice weekly in the evenings from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Layu Emergency Shelter. The project also covered the transportation to and from the venue, from Bells all the way to Dubla. 
Approximately 40 entrepreneurs took part in this training program. Acting Minister for Youth Development and Empowerment, uh, the Honorable Gregory Veer, says notwithstanding the challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic, the Dominica Labour Party government is able to put a number of systems in place geared at creating employment for young people. These opportunities are created so you can excel and maximize your full potential. And it's not only DYBT, I can speak of what is happening in the digital sector. Be reminded that this Labour Party administration is investing $75 million in the digital economy. And that is for you, the young people of Dominica. Minister Rivier says the Ministry for Youth will continue to support the Dominica Youth Business Trust to ensure that young men and women can contribute significantly to this country's socio-economic development. Let me reassure you, you, the Dominican youth, that this government remains totally committed to the continuation and the success of the DYBT. It would be remiss of me not to make mention and express my gratitude to UK-funded Skype for Youth Employment Project for their support to the DYBT. This included expanding the work of the trust. And when I say expanding the work of the trust, I'm talking about decentralizing its flagship program. Mr. Rudy Defoe is an EDP graduate. He spoke of the many benefits he received from this training with the DYBT. Being a small business owner, it was a huge sacrifice to have my business closed for an entire month to attend the training. However, the wealth of knowledge, training and skills that I have obtained through the training program has been immense and I think that my fellow graduates would agree. From the first week session of the Entrepreneurship Development Program, we were taught a lot about understanding oneself as an entrepreneur, socializing and building good communication skills were all very part of this great exercise. We were all enthusiastic in such activities that brought us closer as a team, exchanging good ideas and motivating each other. By the second week into the program, we started to focus more on our business. We were blessed with the opportunity to meet with different professionals willing to share their knowledge on their work field. We got into topics like what is a small business, who is an entrepreneur, and why do many individuals go into business. We also looked into marketing strategies and surveys for setting up a small business. All the information that we received were important into developing our business plan. This gave us the opportunity to go out into the market field to test our business ideas with potential customers. The Determined Entrepreneur Awards for 2021 went to Mr. Lawson Alexander and Ms. Nora St. Rose. 103 individuals received certificates for attending DIBT's training. The Dominica Youth Business Trust was established in 2004. 22 Dominican entrepreneurs are set to receive grants under the United Nations Development Programme and the Government of Dominica Future Tourism Programme. Government, through the Ministry of Tourism, International Transport and Maritime Initiatives, partnered with the UNDP for the provision of technical and financial assistance. This initiative was launched originally in four OECS countries. MSMEs from across the region were invited to apply directly to the program, and 22 Dominican MSMEs involved in diverse businesses were successful. A special focus was placed on women-led businesses and those moving towards online and cashless transactions. All beneficiaries have participated in the open training, the business adaptation program, and completed their business improvement plans. The 22 small businesses will benefit from business grants ranging from over 10,000 to 18,000 EC for a total amount of EC $257,000. $850, which was received from the UNDP for disbursement. Minister Charles says these business owners will address critical constraints within their organizations, which will in turn strengthen capacity and structure. This will create employment within the rural, suburban and urban areas. On Friday, January 28th from 10 a.m., the beneficiaries will be officially congratulated at the future tourism grant handing over ceremony by representatives from the government of Dominica and UNDP. 
Subsequent to the ceremony, the beneficiaries will receive their grants and will undergo a period of monitoring and evaluation assistance to ensure that the funds are effectively used for the future development of their businesses. The government takes this opportunity to publicly congratulate the beneficiaries and remains extremely grateful to the UNDP for this timely project as we continue to build a formidable MSME sector in Dominica. Government continues to put plans in place to strengthen the capacity and structure of MSMEs across the island. Government is consulting various sporting organizations here towards a resumption of sporting activities in the country. Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt announced on a recent Anu Pali program that efforts were underway to resume group sports, which came to a halt due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The Dominican Netball Association will host a regional tournament here from February 10. We are considering the resumption of sporting activities. We are currently consulting with the relevant sporting organizations and this will continue as we consider the various proposals before us for organized group sports. And this, I expect, will be finalized by the end of January. In the first instance, however, the Cabinet has approved the hosting of the second OECS Eastern Caribbean Central Bank Netball Tournament. The games were originally scheduled for November 2021, but were postponed due to the sharp rise in COVID-19 positive cases in participating territories. The Dominican Netball Association will host the regional tournament from February 10th to 18th, 2022 at the forecourt of the Windsor Park Stadium. The government of Dominica is currently holding discussions to create a special regime of concessions for the town of Portsmouth. The measure targets those who wish to build new structures within the town. These concessions will allow individuals to upgrade building structures in Portsmouth, which will in turn enhance the aesthetics of the town. Prime Minister Skerritt explained that during 2022, he will be discussing with the relevant stakeholders a policy framework for these concessions. We will be, in the new year, we will be articulating the terms and conditions of, of that um, policy framework so that persons who are, who are building, we tend to build, whether it's for, for private or commercial um, business, would benefit once you build it within a particular um, uh, um, boundaries of, of, of town of Port Some of you will, be, you, will, you will benefit from some, some concessions. So. You are watching National Focus. More when we return. Welcome back. Residents of the south of Dominica will soon have easier access when traversing the Lubia to Bagatelle area. The Lubia Bagatelle Road project will upgrade a 20 kilometer stretch of road. British High Commissioner to Dominica, His Excellency Scott Fusadon Wood, recently taught the project. The project will include the rehabilitation and replacement of a number of bridges which are critical to the integrity of the road network. Capital Projects Manager for Creed, Mr. Kenneth Dazzle, give an overview of the project. The design um, included geometric modification to the carriageway um, in the form of expanded width. We have some um, horizontal and vertical realignment in some of the areas along the route. Um, we have some geotechnical interventions in the form of upslope and downslope cuts and some stabilization and some other um, retaining structures. In addition to that, um, the hydraulic capacity has been increased of the pro project itself 
As a result, it gave rise to the installation of five single-span um, bridges. These bridges are nine meters wide, and they range from 15, 22, to even up to 40 meter clear span. Um, in addition to the bridges, we have about 52 plus culverts to be installed with increased capacity. So that along with the roadside drains, which gives it the increased hydraulic capacity of the, the project itself. Mr. Dazzle says the road will be constructed to international standards of a three-star rating. This means safety features on the road will be taken into careful consideration. The design focused in terms of the primary drivers, which is resilience and safety. So the resilience aspect of it was the infrastructure. And from the safety side of things, now we focus here on the delineation of the road itself. We have improved um, lighting through the, road, um, the, the roadside lights. Um, you have safety barriers to increase the, the level of safety. And one of the features that you will see as part of the, the, the project here is for pedestrians. Because you take pedestrians into consideration, so now we have areas specifically earmarked to capture that, um, the traversing public there. Local contractors will be engaged on this project. Mr. Dazzle says 12 individuals have expressed interest or expressed interest last year, five of which have made submissions. From the five, we have managed to shortlist four companies. So these companies are now currently awaiting the invitation for bids, which will be issued in the first quarter of this year. Um, in addition to the contractors, we have the consultants um, to administer the project itself, to, um, so from the construction supervision side of things. Again, in the last quarter of last year, we went out for requests of expressions of interest. This process saw 14 companies expressing an interest, um, 12 made submissions, and of the 12, after the evaluation process has been completed, we had um, a list of six uh, companies um, who are vying for the supervision of the works. Provisions will be made for critical access to social and economic activity for these communities. Due to the impact of Hurricane Maria on Dominica, major reworking of the design was required. Leading ophthalmologist Dr. Hazel Schillingford Ricketts says significant funding from the Brenda Strafford Foundation has brought the hospital's ophthalmology department closer to reaching its target. Dr. Ricketts was addressing a handing over ceremony where the People's Republic of China donated 80,000 AC dollars in eye care and cardiovascular equipment to the Dominica China Friendship Hospital. Dr. Ricketts said improving eye care services in Dominica remained a costly undertaking. But she says equipment from the PRC and funds from friendly organizations have allowed for greater flexibility in producing or procuring additional medical equipment. A building and staff alone does not provide a service. And so we need eye equipment. And eye equipment are very expensive. So we just got funding from the Brenda Strafford Foundation, who has never abandoned us over the years, and provided for us US $445,000 to go towards purchasing equipment. And I have been busy sourcing this equipment and last night, our first draft, we came up to 405,000 US dollars. Dr. Ricketts explained that the equipment donated by the People's Republic of China gives the department the opportunity to stretch its budget in terms of purchasing additional medical equipment. The good thing is that some of the equipment I had on my list, after I got the list from the People's Republic of China, I realized that I could remove those equipment from our list and this has now provided us with freed up some funds to go towards purchasing either additional equipment or consumables. So this is the context in which we are receiving these gifts today because they are not only useful for us to use but it has also freed up funds from what we were already going to purchase to allow us to um, purchase more. Prime Minister the Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt concluded another leg of an ongoing tour of infrastructure projects around the country on Thursday. This time, the Prime Minister and his delegation went through the streets of the Rosa Central constituency. The Prime Minister was accompanied by the parliamentary representative for Rosa Central, the Honorable Melissa Skerritt, 
members of cabinet and representatives of the Ministry of Public Works, among other senior public officials. Prime Minister Skerritt says meeting the people on these tours is very important as it allows him an opportunity to hear the ideas of how they believe government can help improve their lives. The Prime Minister's delegation also toured the new apartment on Upper Riverbank near the Dominica Grammar School. The Prime Minister says the administration is known for going out and meeting with the people. Prior to the Russell leg of the tour, the Prime Minister had been to Petit Savan and Grand Bay constituencies. GIS will bring you much more on Thursday's tour in our next newscast. And that's all for the English version of the news. Shakira Pierre John is next with Creole Highlights. Bienvenue pour nouvelle à Creole. Nous avons ici Shakira Pierre John. Gouvernement Dominique, par ministre Tourism, fait collaboration avec le United Nations Development Programme pour poursuivre les supports techniques et financiers à le programme Tourism là qui a lancé à la région là en quatre pays à OICS là. Petit business ou en région là tape opportunité là pour faire application pour le programme ça là et puis vendre Dominique qui ni petit business tenir succès. Spécial attention te mettez à sous business qui a couru par femme et puis business qui a fait manœuvre pour conduire business à sous ligne. Tout ce monde là qui t'a accepté pour programme ça là t'a participé en entraînement et puis aussi tenir pour fin fini yo plan pour enhancer business yo. C'est ben des monde là qui bénéficie hold your grant qui a aller hold 10000 pour 18000 dollars. Ça c'est un valet en total de 157,850 et puis 50 dollars. Ces business là qui servent l'agence à la pour adouer ces problèmes yo kani en business yo et puis ça qui fait capacité yo plus fort et puis ça qui ba yo opportunité là pour faire employment ba Dominique. Va de le 28 janvier, ces business là qui ka bénéficie hold programme ça là qui forme par une cérémonie là yo qui tape reconnaissance présent pour cérémonie ça là qui est représentatif gouvernement et puis UNDP. Après cérémonie là, c'est bénéficiaires là qui est appelé grandio et puis au Kenya pour aller en yon temps la moun ka évaluer yo pour faire certains yo ka servi l'argent là pour ça yo ni pour servir pour. Ministre pour tourisme honorable Denis Charles du gouvernement ka pour opportunité là pour complimenter ces moun là qui tape assistance ça là. Et puis, le gouvernement a remercié UNDP là pour le projet de la gouvernement a continué pour encourager le petit business à Dominique. À d'autres nouvelles, le registrar et le directeur de compagnies et les intellectual properties, Ms. Afflin Nesti, dit que 2016, si pour transition à un automated e-registry, ça c'est un registry à souligne. Le registry là a servi par le monde et puis si pour. Pour registration et puis faire process là pour enregistrer nos compagnies et puis pour registration Inland Revenue et puis Dominica Social Security. Transaction là pour finir registration bien simple. Yon moun sa plein sa form là à souligne. Mais dernier transaction là n'est pour faire en l'office SIPO et puis moun n'est pour payer aussi en SIPO. Si pour les public la savent l'année passée, si pour t'es un process là pour avancer deuxième stage digitalisation process là, et puis assistance et puis si pour hot compute Caribbean et puis inter American Development Bank. Miss Nesty di yoni attention pour ni service yo digitize tout suite et puis ça qui fait provision pour mon payer pour certificat yo asiling. Directeur là dit ça qui fait registration ba mon plus facile. Ça, c'est tout pour nouvelle en Creole. Non, moi, c'est Shakira Pierre John. Ni au bon week-end. Au revoir. Thank you, Shakira. And now, your weather update. Weak and stable conditions due to the presence of a trough system are expected to result in an increase in cloudiness and scattered showers. This condition will prevail particularly over the central and southern portions of the Les Antilles, including Dominica, during today. A relative improvement in conditions can be expected during the night. Slight to moderate seas are anticipated during the next 24 to 48 hours, with waves peaking to 5 feet. An increase in northerly swells together with an increase in dust haze concentration can be expected early next week. 
And that's all for this edition of National Focus. Be sure to follow GIS Dominique on Facebook, YouTube, and on Twitter. You can also drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm. From all of us here on the GIS News Production team, I am Julian Morris. Thanks for watching, and remember to stay safe.